I call the meeting to order. We'll start with roll call. Commissioner Allen. Present. Commissioner Norwood, not here. Commissioner Siragusa, not here. Commissioner Roberts, not here. Commissioner Stallings. Here. Commissioner Orr. Here. And Mayor Pinkinen. Here. Okay. All right. Four. Okay. You do have a quorum. Just have a quorum. Uh, item two, at the commissioner's request, discuss any item of concern on the regular session agenda. Okay. Seeing none, item three, study items. 3.1, discuss Veterans Appreciation Week. I wonder who that could be. It's Elaine? Actually, it's actually a tag team. It's a tag team. Tag team, okay. Yeah. yeah, it's tag team. So we'll start out with Saturday. Saturday's the ride to remember each of the veterans or attendees that come to do that. We'll receive a, um, a set of dog tags from a Vietnam veteran that's on the wall. And so that's our annual fundraiser. We'll be doing that. Um, come on, Chief, we can share. Um, on Monday is an exciting event for us. Um, that is when we're gonna reveal the uh, Fallen Heroes, Heroes from the Heartland Project. And we also have challenged Ena Public Schools for a children's poster contest. So we'll be revealing the winners of that contest that night. Um, I do have one sneak peek, but I can ask, please do not take any pictures. I know that this family is going to be watching Streamline. I do not think she's going to be able to get here, but I wanted to show you a little picture of what is to come. This is the traveling exhibit that the PACE organization helped us to purchase. I hope you'll be signing that check tonight. Um, this is going to recognize 10 veterans that have an attachment to Enid, um, with the exception of the first two, and those are going to be our first lawsuits in Iraq and Afghanistan. But this is um, one of our exhibits of Clint's story, who was uh, killed in action on August 4, 2006, when an IED went on, uh, detonated near his Humvee. And so Tox Murillo is painting these portraits, and you can see the quality. Oh, I lost my little piece of styrofoam. It's still wet. Um, but this is one of the 10 portraits that we'll be exhibiting, the traveling exhibit. It's gonna go all over Oklahoma. They'll be on a red carpet uh, with an American flag behind it and a flag spreader that holds it out. Um, and it will honor 10, 10 of Oklahoma's finest. And they all have, like I said, connections to Enid. We have John J. Bonaya, who was, uh, took his training at Vance Air Force Base. Uh, was killed in Qatar, and we have uh, Dale Shillington, who was killed in a civilian aircraft accident prior to an air show. Those are two of Vance's fallen that we'll be honoring. Then we also have uh, Chris Hank and several others. Doyle Wayne Bollinger was a Navy cadet that uh, was building bridges and infrastructure. Um, he was born in Enid, but raised in another uh, city. So. You can just see how magnificent these portraits are going to be. Tox has done a wonderful job, and we can't wait to be able to get that traveling around Oklahoma. So that will be Monday night. Um, Tuesday, uh, Commissioner Saragossa is, Saragossa is taking care of that event. It is our POW MIA ceremony tree planting at Vance Air Force Base, and so he is taking care of that. Wednesday is our free luncheon for veterans. I don't, I don't have a, oh, is this the clicker? Mm. Yep. What did it go? Can, can you help, can you help click or? Uh, that, that's the clicker, but there's no. There's no slides to click, okay. okay. I'm just trying to highlight. Oh, all okay. I have, just well, you're doing fine just talking. All right, so <coughs> Wednesday is our free meal for veterans. That's gonna be held at the First Baptist Church. It is also co-sponsored by the AMM Bucks, and we'll be serving chicken cordon bleu and uh, other good dishes, and we'll have a special speaker uh, for that event. And then uh, Thursday, we actually have a free day. Friday is the reveal of the uh, Huey Project, which we're super excited about. Um, we have uh, partnered with Enid Communications, and we have been traveling, collecting veteran stories from the Vietnam era that have connections to the Huey aircraft. They'll be on our grids um, behind, or as part of a backdrop by the Huey. That's also our legacy awards ceremony where we'll be honoring five area veterans for their service to our country. 
Um, two of them have a really cool story, and I haven't gotten back uh, any information yet from PA, but uh, we have a, uh, Bill Parker is an Omaha Beach Day One D-Day survivor. He is going to be our Legacy Veteran of the Year. He's 100 years old. Oh my uh, he will be there. He'll also be in the parade. Um, the next day, we're going to have him spend the night and be a part of that. And what's really cool about that, too, is our Army Air Corps Veteran of the Year was actually bombing the beaches of southern France, Omaha, Utah, uh, Juneau, those bases, he, or those beaches he was bombing the day Bill Parker was um, climbing the walls. And so um, it's a really neat story. Um, I've asked Gerald Gilbert if he will introduce the Army Veteran of the Year and Colonel Johnson if he will do our Army Air Corps Veteran of the Year. Um, but we'll have a really neat introduction that talks about the air and the ground for those two and to connect them together. But it's really amazing for those two to be able to meet together for the very first time as one was carrying the, the load in the air and the other was carrying the load on the ground. So that is an amazing thing. We do have uh, Colonel Chuck de Bellevue is our Air Force Veteran of the Year. We have another Army uh, Veteran of the Year. Um, and then we also have our Lifetime Legacy Award that we'll be presenting. And Mayor Pankinen is our previous Lifetime Legacy Award will be presenting that for us. So um, it's gonna be an exciting evening. The Haynes sisters are coming up uh, from Texas. They're gonna be part of our musical entertainment for that. And we will, um, we will just, it's just gonna be awesome time. And then we have Saturday. And Saturday is just chock full of things to do. So as I briefed you before, um, we want to turn the parade into an event, and that's what we've done. So we have a full day of activities. Um, this isn't just AMBUCS. AMBUCS have, is chairing the parade, but in conjunction with uh, Elaine. Wall of Honor. The Wall of Honor. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, we've made this into an event, so we'll have the parade. We've had 17 food trucks call and ask us to come to our parade this year. Uh, those will be down Broadway. We've selected 10 so far. We may select a few more to go in the uh, driveway on the north side of the courthouse. We have vendors coming that will uh, sell patriotic memorabilia on the courthouse lawn. Um, and then we basically go straight from there to the static display we'll have in Stride, Stride Bank Center. Um, it's going really well. I think you'll be well pleased with what we put together. Uh, as of right now, we have 52 individual entries. Of course, each one of those entries will have multiple vehicles or floats or whatever they're putting together. So we're expecting about 100 plus at this point. They're still coming in. Last two weeks, they come in pretty heavily. So we're expecting a large parade. Uh, we've been monitoring the weather. We've got 49 and sunny for that day. It seems to be holding strong. So uh, we're hoping for uh, just a great day, great event, and then culminating that evening with the cruise, um, the car show or cruise that <coughs> night. So um, I think you'll be well pleased. In the Stride Bank Center, we're going to have an F4 fandom that people can actually land. And so there'll be a contest for that. We have a performing artist that has a spinning canvas and he will actually paint three canvases, patriotic canvases for us uh, to music while that's going on. We have a Model T group that is going to come and they're going to try to set a record for uh, assembling the Model T and get it running in, in just, their record is five minutes. So we're gonna try to see what we can do to, to, to meet that. Um, there's just gonna be uh, aircraft cockpits, lots of things going on. A uh, great, great way just to extend the day. It'll be climate controlled in the event something does happen with the weather, then we can move that. But we'll have the jumpy toys for the kids. It'll be a big family oriented event. And then the cruise at the end is in the lock uh, supply parking lot in the old boys market for all us old folks that know where that is. I'm not just looking at you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rob. <clears throat> Um, I remember. <laughs> and so we'll have the car show in there, and then we'll they'll be able to drive through. And so we have um, uh, a Traeger grill that we're going to be giving away and different things like that. So 
a lot of things that will be going on uh, in with that night, and we just think it's going to be a fantastic day uh, to set a precedent for what we can do next year that will be bigger and better. Questions for us? Thank you for your hard work, Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> well, we couldn't have done it if we didn't have a generous donation that helped us to be able to bring some of these people to Enid. Um, it, it, it's a big draw um, for our patrons to be able to come. We haven't had a lot of a, an audience at the parades in the past. We're hoping that with all this effort that that will change. One thing I didn't mention, we have the drum, drum and bagpipe group coming out of Kansas. Um, I guess that is a big uh, draw to our parades. Um, <laughs> the new Ambucks, the new Ambucks uh, are bringing them. So um, drum. Drum. Oh, drum. okay. Okay. No, no, that no makes drones. More sense. <laughs> that are we milling kilts? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we should have a very nice parade this year. Did the lady from Scotland help you uh, decide to do that? Or? <laughs> no, 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 this was all chiefs. No, it's my blessing, his work. Ah, okay. Any questions? Good. No. Okay, great job. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. Item 3.2, discuss pedestrian bridge issues. Morale. Good evening, Mayor. Um, just a couple of things before we start the presentation. Uh, uh, on the traffic control, uh, Garriott is open to the through traffic, Garriott and Hayes. And uh, on 30th Street, a railer track, uh, there is a construction going on, and it takes about seven to 10 days to finish that work. And the railroad is working on replacing that work on tra yeah. rails right there. Yeah. 30th, just south of Willow? Yep, south of Willow. <clears throat> and, and also, Garriott, can you get open tonight? Yep, it is open today. Edit in case. Um, on the pedestrian bridge, um, we have uh, Ramon. He's our project engineer. He works on transportation. He's going to give you um, a brief on the findings of the pedestrian bridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hello, uh, Commissioner, <laughs> Mayor. Uh, so. Uh, Public Works called us, the engineering department, to come and look at this bridge on the Hay School. And if you don't know where the school is, uh, it's right there on the South Van Buren and then to the left side. So we did, that's the bridge that we're going to be discussing. That's, that's the school, and right on the left side of the school um, elementary is. So while we were inspecting it, that's an, uh, a view from the, of the bridge. This is the current conditions. And this is what we found. Immediately, you know, uh, you can see the floorboards with holes. <coughs> some some of the um, boards had nails sticking out. So that's on the deck. This one it's at support number four, as you can see on my on my square um, red lines. The the beam it's almost gone. And, and they are carrying these other beams. So th this support, you know, it has to be. But this is another uh, of the beams that span from support to support. And what I noticed is that they were exposed to fire at one point, some, some of those beams. And this one on the left side, you can see those bolts and screws. This is where they, they attach the guardrails. So it, this bridge is old, as you can see, and it split the beams in plus fire on the other ones. And then these are the posts on the guardrails already with corrosion. 
So maintenance requirements, pretty much replacing beams, braces, the piles, and, and the floorboards. That's, that's what is required. And in conclusion, we have three options. If we close it, we have another bridge on the top about 800 feet. This is the, the bridge I'm talking about. This is the other one above 800 feet if we decide to close it. But if we are gonna reconstruct it, it has to meet ADA um, and FEMA standards. But if we just wanna keep it open, we need to do those, those recommendations I listed, but it will require uh, periodic inspections about twice a year, I recommend. So I didn't quite catch that about the Hayes Bridge. Is that, no, yes, <clears throat> I, rather the trail pad bridge. So uh, I'm familiar with all these bridges. So that uh, You're saying get rid of it? No, it's, it's I have through those three recommendations. Um, you, we, we either close it, but if we close it, we have another bridge on the top. The other option is to reconstruct it, bring it up to code. But if it if we do that, it has to meet ADA standards and FEMA standards. Right. Yeah. Let the, me jump. Let me jump in. There's four. I believe there's four pedestrian bridges in the city, and we've inspected all of them. This one is in such poor condition that we've closed it, hmm. at least temporarily. I think a valid suggestion is because the other bridge is at 800 feet. Did we measure that? It's a brand new trail bridge. It's made with modern steel trusses and stuff or whatever you call that kind of bridge. Yes, it's a little bit out of the way. We are suggesting that perhaps maybe we just close and remove this bridge because we have another one that serves the area. Uh, however, that's totally up to you guys. Um, I don't know that we have any cost estimates yet. I'm thinking that because of those um, cross beams and, and, and some of the rotten um, cross members or whatever, you're, whatever those supports are that you're showing, it's not as simple as just replace the boards on the on the deck. It is very narrow. I went out and looked at it and thought, my goodness, this must have been designed back when, um, you know, a long time ago, uh, when standards well, were way I different. I used to use the bridge. Yeah, when you that will tell you anything. I'm not as old as Rob, quite, but. <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the bridge is. Rob, did you have a birthday between last meeting and this meeting or something? <laughs> Must have. <laughs> the timbers were hand hewn. That's how old that bridge is. <laughs> And I don't know when those bridges were done. I suspect that after the big flood in 73 that, that they, they, they were put in then or they had to be repaired probably after that time. But yeah, be I remember repaired. being a kid on the one over by Hoover. Yeah. Um, so I think what um, Ramon's telling you is that it will be costly. We don't know how much to refurbish or replace that bridge. Correct. We're thinking and suggesting maybe we don't need to. Uh, particularly because there's another bridge, I don't know if we have a picture of it, that's near Hayes that you'll be aware of, that's oriented in a north-south fashion that gets people across on the other side to where they can use that one or the other one. Mm -hmm. It is also of the same time period and probably got significant wear issues. If we were going to spend money to replace one, I'd suggest we replace that one. Um, but again, this is bringing this, this just came to our attention, so this gives you a flavor of the things that come up from time to time because the city is full of infrastructure that is aging and in some cases worn out and way past the need for replacement. So it's an opportunity to discuss it. Um, nothing's set in stone yet. It'll remain closed until we make a decision. And I, I don't think you guys have put a price tag on it, but I'm guessing those bridges aren't cheap. So I'm guessing we're talking six figures to fix it yep. or replace it. <coughs> have, have we done any kind of a study to see how many people come across it? No. I don't think we have done so. No. You no, know that, that would probably make sense during the school year, uh, during a school day, is to see you know if there is a, enough kids coming across there to justify it. Uh, but so I think you're right, Gerald. It's going to be expensive to fix it, and it probably makes sense to, if it's those old timbers, you, you ought to replace it, put them metal bridge up there. And that's the only neighborhood on, on the left side. We can certainly look at doing that. 
um, maybe trying to do some kind of study. Go ahead, Councilor. Is the, is the access from the Hayes Bridge where they were, were currently crossing, is the access to the trail bridge pretty easy if we decide not to rebuild it? Are there sidewalks up along yes. the side of the drainage? You can see on the okay. east side of the road, there's a really good sidewalk. Okay. Um, Ramon, if you can highlight that between the, the Hayes Bridge and the Trail Bridge, I think. No, other side. Is, is it, yeah, right there. Right, right there. there. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I don't think there's a sidewalk on the other side, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure. A beaten path. There is no beaten path. path. Okay. I don't think there is on the other there's side. There's no sidewalk on the west side? No. On this side, no. Yeah. And the school, is the school in the top left part of that picture? Where's the school? Right, right there. Right right oh, there. the school's on that side. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely want to talk to the, the school. I think they'll help us. I don't know that we've talked to the school yet, other than they know it's, it's closed right now. Well, we got to close right now. The trail bridge that's all ADA compliant? Yes, sir. Yeah. And then we do have sidewalks coming down? Yes. I'd like to find out how many wheelchair bound people that are in the school and whether or not they use the Hayes Bridge at all. Okay. We can probably get the school to help us with that information and yeah. we can, Scott, we can probably take that one for action and talk to Dr. Floyd and figure out who the principal is and they'll help us get that information that we can get to you guys and, yeah. and share with the commission when the time comes to make a decision on this. It's 800. 800 feet is not much for somebody that's mobile. Yeah, if you're in a chair, it is. And if nobody that's ADA in wheelchairs that is using the Hayes Bridge, then um, they can currently they cannot use the Hayes Bridge they can't because use it, it doesn't no. meet they, ADA. Right. It's not ADA yeah. even yeah. close to ADA compliant now. It's so right. okay. it's I narrow so. enough you could not ride a bicycle across it. It's very narrow. I did a survey of one. It's not scientific, but when I was out there, there was a lady walking her dog, and I asked her what she thought about if we didn't reopen that bridge. And she said, well, you know, it's farther to walk and stuff. And I said, yes, it is. But Morali reminded me, hey, it's good to walk. <laughs> <laughs> but we all know that nobody likes to walk, which is probably part of why we, we Anyway, that's a whole different matter. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, stop digging. Yeah, stop digging. Okay. <laughs> this is something that we might be able to get grants for as well um, through either ODOT or tourism or recreation, something like that. So um, we will probably look for that. But even so, we probably need to make a decision at some point yes. whether we really want to spend the funds to replace that one because we know there's three more that really need to get replaced at some point. So that's what yes. we really want to accomplish tonight, right, Ramon? Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. okay. And Morelli will talk to you about the Oklahoma yes. Avenue. Is there any more questions or thoughts nope. about pedestrian nope. bridges? We will try to get some information from the school and try to do a, a survey as best we can of how many people really use it. That will help justify yeah. what, what we do. Okay. Another update on uh, another project, which is on Oklahoma bridge reconstruction. Uh, currently, the bridge on Oklahoma, this is the St. Mary's Hospital, and this is Oklahoma Avenue, and this is Boggy Creek. So this bridge is out, and uh, currently we're working on replacing it. Uh, the construction of the bridge, about 95% is complete. Water line completed, almost 95%. Uh, the two things they are not done is uh, uh, roadway and um, sanitary sewer. Um, uh, the, there used to be a sanitary sewer. Yeah. Um, back in the 90s, um, there used to be a 18 inch and 24 inch sewer lines on the west side of the creek. Um, after the 90s, uh, we had an issue like with the capacities. So, city installed a 36 inch line on the west east side of. Boggy Creek. During the process, um, the existing lines on west side, they were not being, I mean, they were fixed to, uh, for the time purpose. But when we replace the bridge on this side, sorry.
So when we're replacing it, we found deficiencies like that is the existing line. This is already broke. And uh, on the downstream side, it's completely uh, deteriorated and uh, it cannot be used. So we, um, this is not part of the contract um, when we have opened it. So now we have to work with the contractor <coughs> to get a price um, to replace all that sewer lines. Uh, I just bring it to your attention. What's so so what this really means is that there's a future change order or a future bid package going out to fix this additional sewer line. Right. When we start fixing, and I remember, Commissioner Orr, when you came on, it's been probably over, well over a year now, yeah. this came up and we awarded it and one of the challenges is why does everything take so long? Well, there's a lot of reasons why, and one of them is now when we start digging and fixing things, we find more problems. And so we found another problem now that's going to cost some money to fix. Right. Uh, are you brave enough to throw out how much this one's going to cost? Or? Um, okay, we don't know yet. Not done yet. Six how figures, big, how though, big right? Is it? Uh, this is a 24 inch line. And how many linear feet are we looking at? Uh, About 300 feet. 300? Yeah. Wow. Six figures? It'll be expensive. Yeah. Uh, the reason uh, we couldn't fix it uh, as is, this manhole has like five pipes coming in. So they were not being abandoned properly during the time. So we cannot fix it, just patch it. So we have to reconstruct all that system. So. Oh. Secret is don't dig up old stuff. Exactly. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to find. Hey, we do have a bit of good news. How uh, much? How much of this contributed to the deterioration behind the bridge that caused the bridge Fish. issues? Yeah. This old stuff. How much did that contribute to it? It's very hard to say. Yeah. Okay. But it, it certainly did. Yeah. The ground's going to be saturated and sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so this is probably at least part of the reason why the whole thing failed. Yeah. I was just going to say briefly, we do, as you're well aware, have a sanitary sewer fund, and probably all our citizens are aware because they pay in a certain amount of fee. The good thing about that is that generates a certain amount of money every year. Uh, we may have, I don't know if we allocated all of that or not, but I know that there's usually some in reserve. Right, Aaron, do you think we'll be, with, within reason, I think we'll have some funding to be able to fix this, right? Yes. Okay. Um, do we have any idea how long? I know uh, St. Mary's was concerned when we had to close off the, right. the entrance to the emergency room area or reroute it. Yeah, um, we are, um, yeah, we are diligently working with the uh, hospital, so they know the progress, what's facing, and so we are constantly in contact with them. So. Okay. Do we have any idea how long it would take? I mean, we don't even know how much it costs, but I mean, is it a year, is it a oh, two no. years, is uh, it a it, six it, months? We're talking about in months, like okay. a couple right. of months, so. Do we, we anticipate we'll be able to change order this off an existing yes, contract? Yes, we, we do have a unit price in the contract, so we can add units to finish the project. So once we figure out the units, we'll have a pretty, yeah. we'll have an exact price for the right. change order? Yeah. Okay. Do, who, who is the contract currently with? CP integrated. Oh, okay. But yeah. the contract that we would change order would be with the, who's doing the bridge? Yeah. Okay. Who's doing the bridge. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Let's see. I think that's, that's going to talk to us about it another way. It's yeah, they just did that. We yeah, just did both of those. Okay. All right, item 3.4, update on United Way calendar. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Faith Melton. I got to run the United Way committee this year. We had four ladies on my committee also. Um, Amy Rogers, Kelly Monkris, uh, Karen Haggard, and Jody Kurpinski. Kurpinski, yes. Okay. <laughs> um, this Jody. year, we did roughly seven or eight fundraisers. Um, we did some big ones, we did some little ones, tried to do something for everybody. Um, so the big one we did, we did our kickoff where we did a big block party. We had dunk tanks for employees, food trucks, all that stuff. Um, a new event we did this year, we did a cutest pet, which was huge. I didn't know so many people had pets in the city, but 
That was a really big one we did. Um, we did a bowling night. Apparently we haven't done that in a few years. So that one went really well, pretty competitive. So that one was good. And then we did our silent auction we do every year. And then we have our, oh, we did our employee cook-off for Chile last week. Pedro Perez won that. He's our fleet mechanic, or one of them. So um, we do have next weekend. On Friday, we have the 34th annual chili cook-off at the Stride Center, if you guys want to be there and support us. It's from 11 to 1, and the theme is superheroes this year. So we have to make a superhero booth, so we're working on that. Um, but Pedro's going to be serving chili at that. So this year, through events, we our goal was $5,000. We raised 4500 a little bit over that, so that's pretty good this year. And then for employee donation slips, we raised 4,800. So we're doing really good this year. Maybe we'll raise a little bit more. We'll have a bucket at our event Friday. So if you guys want to put some money in there, support us some more. And yeah, and that's it. <laughs> and I'll just say, you, you guys have done a great job. I appreciate thank your leadership and everybody else, Kelly and Jody and Karen, and um, I'm sure I'm missing a lot of people. Um, we had, uh, what did we have, 10, 11 entries uh, from the city in our yes. own internal We had 11, and usually we have like five or six, so that's pretty good this and year. And they were all really good. Yes. This year, Morali did not participate because he didn't want to win again, I think, so. Broke a lot of hearts. <laughs> gave somebody else a chance. He's a professional now, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. He's a professional chili maker. Yep. So, uh, hey, it's a great job. I, I suspect when it's all done, typically the city, just so you you'll know uh, the city is typically will receive usually one of the top dollar awards because usually we're in the top three yes. of entities in the city that donate uh, because of the generosity of employees and everybody else who, yes. who gives. Uh, we're hoping to win this year again too. We'll see. Yes, and we've also <laughs> been right there for best chili and um, mm -hmm. best, uh, best booth before. Yes. I think we've been robbed, so we need to get some, yeah. um, mm -hmm. some judges probably. We need to talk to Dan, see if we can get some... <laughs> Maybe Jerry, we could slip Jerry in there as a judge. There you I think go. you got. I think you got yeah. one. Oh, we do. Me. You? Oh, oh, there you we go. Got the mayor. We need to start working the mayor. All right, we can ah, do it. We got two. <laughs> Man. Want to raise some more money? And the other one's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. So, yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank All right. you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, that's that's all we have for study session. So we're going to have a little break. Uh, we'll reconvene again at 6:30. And thank you.